Hello again. We're doing right triangle trigonometry, and what we did was we did the 45, 45, 90 triangle. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to do a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let me go ahead and write that down. We're going to be working with a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And where that stems from, uh, I guess the theory, if you want to say it, is it stems from an equilateral triangle. And what I mean by an equilateral triangle is that all sides of the triangle are equal. Again, these dashed little lines mean that. If I have one line on each, it means anything with one line or one dash with it is equal in terms of that, or is the same length. If, for instance, if I put two dashes here and I had one dash here, that's not equal. They all have to have one dash in order for them to be equal. And that's pretty hard to erase now. Eh, what are you going to do? So anyways, an equilateral triangle has all sides, same length, and all degrees in a triangle, same length. So I got a 60-60-60 triangle. Something that you, I guess you can see in nature, well, in made nature, I suppose. You know, if you have three people standing at three different spots that are, you know, the same distance from everybody and, you know, everybody's the same in terms of degree measure. It's like, you know, three people, you know, playing with a baseball, throwing it, throwing it, throwing it. You want to see who has got, got the best arm so you stand the same distance, same angle away from each other. Anyways, so I want to create a 30, 60, 90 triangle from here, and I want to see how it works. Um, there's a couple ways to explain this one, and what you can do in order to start to figure it out is figure out uh, what you want to set each side of the triangle to. And yeah, the easiest side is actually one, and I'm going to go ahead and do that, but uh, what you really should set each side of the triangle to is two, and I'll kind of explain that as I go along. So what I want to do is I want to create a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And it's a question that I pose to my class. I say, well, how do you create a 30, 60, 90 triangle from a 60, 60, 60? You know, where do you have to, you know, put your partition? You know, like, where do you have to divide the triangle? Oh, well, cut the triangle in order to create that. And, you know, some students are puzzled, like, hmm. Some students just don't care. And then once in a while, well, not once in a while, more than often, especially when you get to a class like a trig. Most students actually try to figure it out, uh, and you know they, you know it's kind of a challenge, and they want to figure it out. So they say, okay, uh, you know, what happens if you, uh, you know, cut like down here? Does that work, Mr. Shadi? I said, well, that's called bisecting the triangle. And yeah, it does. Uh, what you do is pretty interesting. You cut this one in per perfectly in half, and you create two separate triangles. Now this one remains 60. Since this is perpendicular, you know, that the line, one line is perfectly vertical and the other line is perfectly horizontal, it creates a 90 degree triangle. And since you cut this one in half, since you bisected the 60 degrees, it now becomes half of 60 degrees, which is 30 degrees. So yeah, that's how you do it. Now, like I said before, make sure you set each side of the triangle equal to 1, although in this case, 2 would actually be much easier, but we'll set it to 1. And we'll go ahead and do that. So. Let me go ahead and write our result here. Eh, probably not going to be the most perfect drawing, but eh, I never claim to be perfect in terms of my drawing. So this is 60 degrees, this is 90, and that's 30 degrees. Hopefully you can see that very well. Now each length of the triangle is 1, okay? But this wasn't 1, this was 1 and you got rid of it. And this whole thing was one, but now you're only working with half of it. So since you had one, but you cut it in half, what would it be? And I asked my students, I said, is it a half? And like, yeah, it is. And then I asked them, well, how do you figure out this last side right here? And you know, everybody's puzzled for a second. They don't know, and it's kind of confusing. And I said, well, what kind of triangle is this? I said, it's a right triangle. I said, okay, what formula can you use on a right triangle? And he said, can you use the Pythagorean theorem? Yes, you can. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, what's really interesting is that the hypotenuse of the triangle, the side opposite this 90 degree angle, or the longest side of a right triangle, is always C. Always. Uh, the two legs, pff, doesn't matter. One's A, one's B. Who cares? You know, serious, but... Uh, but this is what we see. So let's go ahead and plug in one half for a. It's one half squared plus b squared equals 
1 squared. I like to put parentheses, not really with 1 squared, but with 1 half squared is probably better because students will mess up if you don't put parentheses around the 1 half. So 1 half squared is 1 fourth plus b squared equals 1 squared. Now, in order to figure out b squared, because I'm trying to figure out this side right here, I've got to subtract a fourth from each side. Ugh. It should just be 1, not 1 squared. Uh, minus a fourth. And what I get, and I'm going to move it over here, is b squared equals 1 minus a fourth, which is 3 fourths. Take the square root of both sides. Same color to me. And you get b equals, now the square root of 3 is just the square root of 3. Uh, square root of 4 is 2. And there you go. You got square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so far, not so bad, I suppose. Uh, what's really interesting, though, is this. A student will usually ask this question Don't you take the positive and the negative when you take the square root of something? And the answer is yes. However, when you're dealing with distance, you never actually have something that's negative distance away. Uh, example, you're not, you know, well, the camera's not negative like 10 feet away from me, it's just 10 feet away from me. So you only account for the positive in this case. Now, what's really interesting uh, is this. I've got this, you know, 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's pretty cool. Uh, when I'm working with these values, though, it's going to be very difficult for me to work with these values. Negative 3, I'm sorry, square root of 3 over 2. 1 half and 1. 1 is not difficult to work with, but these fractions will be. So what we do in the general case is we say, oh, you know, is there a way that we don't have to work with fractions? Like on our 45, 45, 90, where we had 1, 1, root 2, or it was just x, x, and x, root 2. Well, yeah, you can. And what you can do, pardon me, I'm going to go ahead and erase this. You can go back and check it out, if you know, whatever, is you create a similar triangle. And what I mean by a similar triangle is, well, you know, not, not one that's, you know, congruent, I suppose, but one that has the same angle measures. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself another triangle. Mm. Okay. That's still probably not perfectly to code. I don't draw things perfectly, you know. I don't pretend I do. I don't care that I do. What I basically did here was I created a similar triangle. Same degree measures, but clearly not the same triangle. Similar, but not the same. Uh, something to consider though. Basically what I was trying to do, uh, what I was trying to execute here, was draw a triangle that was uh, uh, like it, but proportional. I.e., like if you see somebody that looks like you, except maybe they're a little bit taller, like, you know, like if I'm six foot and then there's somebody that looks exactly like me, but they're seven foot and their arms are proportional to their body and their legs are, you know, as a person gets bigger, everything around them gets bigger too. Same thing with a triangle. I mean, the degrees might still be the same, but what happens is the, the lengths increase proportionally. Well, same degrees, but what I basically did was I drew this twice as big, twice as big, twice as big. So instead of one, now it's two. Instead of one half, it's twice one half, which is one. And instead of root three over two, it's twice as big. If you multiply by two, you get root three. Okay, um, so, well, now what we can do is we can use this pleasantly in the general sense. And what I basically mean by that is this. Uh, this works for this triangle. You know, if you got a triangle with hypotenuse two, you know, one leg of it is root three and the other leg of it is one. But what happens when it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, but the hypotenuse isn't two, it's eight? Well, there's a way to work around that. And what we do is we work for it, we work with it in the general sense. So what we do is we replace every one that we see with an x. Okay, so instead of calling that one, we're going to call this x. I don't see a 1 here. Yes, you do. It's not 2, well, <clears throat> pardon me, it's not 2, it's 2 times 1. So it's 2x. So we don't need this anymore. And it's not root 3, it's 1 root 3, or x root 3. So there you go. Our 45, 45, 90 triangle was x, x, uh, x root 2. 
our 30, 60, 90 triangle is the 30 side is x, the 60 side is x root 3, and the 90 side is 2x. And what I tell my students to remember that is this. What's bigger, x times the square root of 3 or x? So I go, uh, uh, x times the square root of 3. I'm like, okay, so x square root 3 goes with 60 because 60 is a bigger angle. x goes with 30. They say, well, how do you remember 2x? I'm like, I don't. I just memorize it. So the 90 is 2x in this particular case. So that's a, that's a nice little kind of introduction to it, as it were, of 30, 60, 90 triangles. What I want to do eventually, well, I want to cover all the trig, hopefully, as much of it as I can in terms of basics, uh, go over the trigon uh, trigonometric functions, pardon me. But with that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.